don't. Anyways, so the Ottoman Empire. Now we can just look at this and looking at the dates, 1299 to 1923. 1923, that is less than 100 years ago, folks. That this empire was still in existence. Um, so they are going to fall uh, shortly after World War I. Um, there's kind of be like a global economic crash. Um, and plus they've, they've been in bad shape for a little while. But we're, gonna, we're not going to get too much into modern times. We'll reference their end and things like that. But we're going to be focusing um, pretty much up to the... 1600s or so. So setting the stage. It, of course, starts with the Mongols. That's why we start this unit with the Mongols, because the Mongols make it possible for the Ottomans. And we have the Mongols invading Muslim lands around 1215-ish. Um, and with that, they are going to basically just decimate the defenders. Um, but And so we talked about the uh, Khwarezmian um empire which was present-day persia they they wipe them out practically they even go into baghdad which we know was a center for culture for trade for education all of these great things and they in 1258 they are going to make baghdad basically burning rubble they completely destroy the place um there used to be all of these irrigation canals and everything, they fill them in. Baghdad never actually recovers. Um, it was once one of the greatest cities in the world, and now it it, it's, it, it really isn't. Um, it's a city. It's large, but it never is able to regain what it once was. But the Mongols, they, they get all the way to Asia Minor even, which uh, we often call Anatolia. So right up to the, you know, this is Asia Minor right there. It goes in that little tiny you know, Asia Minor, Little Asia, you know, this little version of it. Yeah, they get out of there, all the way there, but then they pull back. So they don't actually rule in, in you know, some of these spots very much. And they wind up going and basically knocking all the pins down and making it open for someone else to take over. And this is going to be cue for the Turks to be able to pick up some of these pieces and become the rulers of the land. Now, this is not going to be the Turks that we want to talk about right now, the Ottomans. It's actually going to be a group called the Seljuks, who, when we talk about the Crusades, and I know this gets really confusing because we, like, go forward in time, and we go back in time, and forward in time, and back in time. Um, we're going to talk about the Seljuk Turks when we talk about the Crusades, because they're going to basically help trigger uh, the holy wars between Christians and Muslims. But we'll do that when we get to Europe later on. So, Osman the First. So Osman is going to be what is called a Ghazi. A Ghazi is going to be a Muslim warrior um, against uh, predominantly Christians and basically against the Byzantine Empire. And the Seljuk Turks are going to give this man, Osman, um, some land and say, all right, you can rule this land. And it's just this little teeny tiny red, dark red spot right there. So he's got these two cities. This is the area of land he controls. Um, and his fellow Ghazis, which will be known as Osmani, because they are the followers of Osman, are going to wind up going and declaring independence. They say, we don't need you guys being our overlords. So they go and wind up becoming their own thing. And they're going to expand rather rapidly. We see they're going to get a couple more cities there. And then eventually we're going to see that these guys are going to start taking tons of territory from the Byzantine Empire. And um, we're going to see they're going to have almost all of Asia Minor by 1350. And as we know, in 1453, the um, Ottomans are going to wind up conquering the city of Constantinople, which is going to make them the most powerful um, empire, basically, in the region and really control a lot of the Mediterranean Sea and Black Sea. So... Um, Osman is going to be our founder. He is a Ghazi. He's a warrior. And just like we talked about with our Mughals, he has a fantastic hat. I guess that's probably what, uh, you know, encouraged Savona to have such a cool hat on right now, the comfy Santa hat. Probably seen the hats that we've had in this class. So 